Solar panels are not one size fits all. The best panel for your neighbour is not necessarily the best panel for you. Picking the right solar panel for your roof is one of the most important things to get right. It's all about maximising the return that you're getting from your roof. There are a lot of videos which try to rank the best panels on the market, but technology moves so quickly that these videos are out of date within a year and the person that made the video might just be trying to push their preferred panel on you. So it's important to know how to compare the different solar panels that you're being offered. There are a few key things to consider when choosing the best solar panel. I'm going to show you the main things that the technical specialists at Spirit Energy consider when we're designing a solar system and deciding which panel models to recommend to our customers. The first thing to look at is the power output. It's usually pretty obvious what the current industry standard is, as the quotes that you've been getting will all be for solar panels within a range of 20 watts or so of each other. As of November 2024, the standard panel output is between 450 watt peak and 470 watt peak. It tends to increase by about 20 watts per year, so I'd expect that we'll be installing close to 500 watt peak panels as standard at the end of 2025. You'll notice that I used the phrase watt peak. That's the peak power output that the panel will output in lab conditions. This is rare in the UK, but if you have a south facing system without any shading, you may see your panels performing at their maximum potential on sunny days. Of course, the panel output is only relevant if you know the size of the panel. It's no good having a 450 watt panel that is twice the size of a 400 watt panel. So really you need to know the power output per meter squared. This is where we get on to module efficiency. Module efficiency is the power output per meter squared. To calculate module efficiency, you hit the panel with 1000 watts of light per meter squared and then see what's outputted. So if the panel is outputting 220 watts per meter squared, it has a module efficiency of 22%. This is not to be confused with cell efficiency, which is to do with how effective the actual photovoltaic cells within the panels are. Currently, the ICO NeoStar panels are leading in terms of solar panel efficiency. In February 2025, ICO are going to be releasing their new NeoStar 3, which should be 24.3% efficient. The next thing to look for is the silicon structure. Currently, the industry standard is monocrystalline silicon solar cells. The alternative is polycrystalline. However, these started to be phased out in 2019, so you most likely won't come across them anymore. Monocrystalline just means a single crystal structure. A company that is 30 minutes down the road from Spirit Energy, Oxford PV, is developing perovskite solar cells. These have got the industry quite excited although I don't think they're commercially available at the moment. Over the next few years, we may see solar panels start to migrate over to perovskite. Don't let that put you off getting solar panels fitted now though. Remember that every day your roof doesn't have solar, you're wasting money on your electricity bill. That's money that you'll never see again. The next thing to look for is the type of semiconductor used in the panel. The current industry standard is N-type. N-type or negative type semiconductors are created by doping a pure semiconductor, in this case silicon, with an impurity, which in the case of solar panels is phosphorus. The impurity donates extra electrons, hence the N for negative. The alternative is P-type, which coats the silicon in boron. There are fewer electrons and the P in P-type stands for positive. P-type can suffer from something called the boron oxygen defect, and N-type panels are more resistant to the light-induced degradation that solar panels regularly experience. Basically, N-type panels have better cell degradation and better performance warranties. You also need to consider how the panel will perform throughout its lifetime. A panel might seem attractive initially, but if it degrades very quickly, then after a few years, that's going to have a notable impact on your generation. It's important that your installer takes solar panel cell degradation into account when modeling for your solar system's performance over a long period of time. There are a few things that contribute to solar panel degradation. Aging is the main one. 
Over the years, factors such as light-induced degradation, outdoor exposure and environmental factors do take a toll on the panels. Micro cracks can develop in the silicon solar cells and the electrical connections can deteriorate as well. There are a few other factors such as thermal cycling and delamination that also contribute to solar panel degradation. Ideally, you want a minimum of 88% of the power output to still be there after 25 years. This is tied into the performance warranty, which I'll come on to now. So the next thing to look at is the warranty. You typically get two types of warranty for solar panels, a power output warranty and a product warranty. The performance or power output warranty guarantees that after a certain period, usually 25 or 30 years, you'll still get a certain power output relative to the original output of the panel. The product warranty guarantees that if there is a defect in 25 years, such as a failed bypass diode, they'll reimburse the cost of the panel or provide a replacement. The warranties do sort of go hand in hand. If the product fails, then the performance warranty will probably also fail. Another thing to look out for is bifaciality. Some solar panels have cells on both sides of the panel, claiming that you can get extra generation from the rear. This is a controversial topic. Ultimately, if your panels are pitched on the roof, then the bifacial side is going to make very little difference. Probably none at all. There's just not going to be enough light bouncing around the underside of the panel to noticeably impact the annual generation. See my video where I compare the Ray Fusion 2 bifacial panel to the Ico Neostar panels. I talk a lot about bifaciality in that video. I think that the bifacial side will make more of a difference for ground mounted systems with multiple rows of panels. In this case, one row of panels may reflect light onto the underside of the next row. Something to consider is the look of the panel. Most people are after all black panels because they tend to look better on the roof. Now, this is a perfectly fine choice and 95% of the panels that we sell are all black. However, the black and silver panels tend to be higher output as well as a bit cheaper. For example, the Ico 455 watt all black panel is about 2% more expensive per watt than the 470 watt, which is at the top of the range. This works out such that the 470 watt panel is around the same price, or maybe even a bit cheaper, even though it's actually higher output. So if you're really looking to make the most of your roof space, then you could sacrifice the look and go for the most cost effective panel in the range. So those are the main points to look at. They should all be on the data sheet. So if you have a few different panel options, then print the data sheets out and put them side by side to compare. Please do let me know your opinions in the comments and the factors that you looked at when choosing the right solar panel for your roof.